In this series of videos, I want to discuss what is meant by a Jeffreys prior. And firstly, let's start off by saying what a Jeffreys prior definitely isn't. One thing it definitely isn't is a way to produce an invariant prior. And by invariant here, I mean that if we had a prior density in terms of some parameter theta, and then we wanted to form a prior in terms of some other parameterization phi, Jeffrey's prior doesn't ensure that the shape of the prior is the same in theta space as it is in phi space. That, in general, is impossible to do. And I've shown that in previous videos that if phi is a non-linear transformation of theta, a uniform prior in terms of theta does not translate to a uniform prior in terms of phi. And that is a problem that's reflected in whatever prior we choose. Whenever we change our frame of reference, in general, we will change our prior. So Jeffrey's prior isn't a way of producing invariant priors. So what is it? The example that I'm gonna use here to discuss what is meant by a Jeffrey's prior is imagining that we're tossing a coin and we use the random variable x to describe its outcome. And in doing so, I'm gonna assume that we're using a Bernoulli density here. So x is a random variable, which is equal to zero if the coin lands tails up and equal to one if it lands heads up. So the idea that I would like to try and convey to you is that suppose we have a model in terms of theta, as I've described it up here, then if we go and we construct a Jeffreys prior in terms of theta, and then we use that Jeffreys prior to produce a posterior, and I'm gonna call that a Jeffreys posterior in terms of theta, then the idea is that we can get to a Jeffreys posterior in terms of some other parameterization, which I'm gonna call here, in this case, psi. The idea is that we can get to the Jeffreys posterior in terms of psi in two different ways. We can either do what we might do kind of by standard, and we use our psi parameterization to make a Jeffreys prior in terms of psi, and we use the Jeffreys prior in terms of psi and the likelihood in terms of psi to produce a Jeffreys posterior. That's one way that we can get there. But there is another way, and I've indicated it here. The idea is that what we could do instead is we use our Jeffreys posterior in terms of theta, and then we just apply our sort of usual change of variables technique using Jacobians, and that produces a Jeffreys posterior, which is exactly the same in terms of psi as we would have obtained if we'd gone the other route. And in case you were thinking that this would apply no matter what sort of prior you used, that's not the case. This is only the case for a Jeffreys prior. So why do some people find this concept useful? Well, suppose that you did your analysis in terms of theta, which in our example here represents the probability of the coin landing heads up, and you went through and you calculated Jeffrey's posterior in terms of theta, and then you passed on that posterior to a colleague of yours who was actually more interested in working in psi space, and psi here, we're gonna just say, are the odds of heads occurring. So that's equal to theta divided through by one minus theta. The idea is that they could actually get the Jeffreys posterior in terms of psi, the odds here, without doing much work at all. All they would need to do is work out the Jacobian after they apply that Jacobian to the Jeffreys posterior in terms of theta, that would give them Jeffreys posterior in terms of psi. So they don't actually need to do any more work. So in a way, what Jeffreys prior is, is it's a way confusingly, of ensuring that Jeffrey's posteriors transform in a certain way. And they transform according to the change of variables rule using Jacobians. So it's wrong to think about Jeffrey's priors as being invariants, as I've indicated before. Perhaps a better word for it 
is borrowed from physics is it's some sort of covariant. So it's a way in which the posteriors actually transform from one parameterization to another one. We're now going to go through all of the steps in this process to prove that this is the case for the example which I've given here, where theta is the probability of heads and psi is the odds of heads occurring. So we're going to break this up into steps. First of all, we are going to work out Jeffrey's prior in terms of theta. Then we're going to work out Jeffrey's posterior in terms of theta. Then we're going to apply our Jacobian change of variables rule to get a posterior in terms of psi. And then we're going to do the other parts of the root, or the other way of, of doing this rather, where first of all we work out Jeffrey's prior in terms of psi, and then we work out Jeffrey's posterior in terms of psi, and hopefully the expressions that we get in parts three and five here should be exactly the same. Before we start, just one thing to say, which is what actually is Jeffrey's prior? Well, the idea is that Jeffrey's prior in terms of theta or any other parameterization is given by the information matrix to the power of half, or the square root of the information matrix, or at least that's the functional dependence on the parameter. And in the examples that I'm gonna be using here, the information matrix is a scalar, and the information matrix, which in this case, as I've said, is a scalar, is just given by minus the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood with respect to that parameter. And so we're gonna use that to work out Jeffrey's prior in terms of theta, and then the analogous result when we replace theta with psi in part four. 